Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogic Paroles, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to dig into what I think has to be the single biggest mistake I see Logic users doing inside their projects that is literally costing them hours of time and frustration. And this is across the spectrum, from beginners to advanced users. I witnessed it in Zoom calls, and it just breaks my heart. Because I know if these super talented people would just invest a little time, a little effort into changing these behaviors, it would transform their workflow and allow them to not waste time and just get into the zone of creating. I'm super passionate about this, so let's dig into it. Okay, so let's say we're on a call together and I want to show you the project on screen. I want to play it back for you. I want to play it for you from the very beginning. Obviously, the first step is to move the playhead to bar one. So first, I'll see someone navigating across their project to find the playhead and then they grab the playhead and they move it you know to the very beginning okay now i got the playhead in position and then they click on the play button up in the control bar all right and once done listening, they'll press on the stop button in the control bar. But actually, Chris, I wanted to play for you a specific section of this project. So of course you would use the cycle range, the yellow bar at the top. Usually they'll use the button right in the control bar. And then of course you would drag the boundaries of the cycle range to the section. All right, so we need to go to the end here and drag it just like the playhead. Okay, so this is the section I want to choose right here. Let's play it. But you know what, Chris? I actually want to show you something in the mixer. So let me, let me open the mixer. Okay, so, uh, you know, um, which one is it again? Is it this one? Oh, no, that's not that one. Um, this one? Ah, okay, th there we go. And look, this is the thing here. All of these tasks that I'm describing should be half a second at most, like quite literally. If I want to start from the very beginning of the project, I just press return to move the playhead to the beginning and press space bar to start playback. I press space bar to stop playback. If I want to set the cycle range to a particular section, well, check it out. I just select a region, command and U to set the cycle range to that section and begin playback with spacebar. If I need to open the mixer, X. If I want to load a plugin, Control, Command, and P. And I can load, let's just say, Space Designer or something like that, right? Boom, it loads. Do you see how much slower it is to navigate around the application, traversing miles and miles using a mouse or trackpad, as opposed to learning a small handful of key commands that you can then just in half a second, open sections, navigate around, begin playback. Key commands is the path forward. This will transform your workflow. Now I get it. Learning keys on the Mac keyboard and what functions they relate to is very intimidating. I get that. But I'm pointing all of this out because I know key commands seems kind of like, yeah, dad. But this one thing, if you just dedicate yourself to learning about 60 to 70 keys on your Mac's keyboard and the function they're related to, this will transform your workflow more so than any plugin, template, or piece of gear that you purchase. That's how dramatic this is. Now, some of us might still be resistant to this idea and think to themselves, well, Chris, I use Logic Pro for iPad, right? That's a touch first environment. And there's a whole generation of creatives who are more comfortable with a screen and touching it as opposed to a keyboard and mouse. And to that, I would say Apple still provides key commands in Logic Pro for iPad. I use them all the time. So whether that's for accessibility or efficiency, they're there, they work. So in today's video, I'm not going to list off 60 or 70 key commands for you. Instead, I want to provide you with some tips and tools for learning this small select amount of key commands that really, again, is going to transform your workflow. But if I'm being honest, this is a two-part problem, isn't it? Right? It's not just learning which button does what in the application, but there's all sorts of jargon that you also have to learn. If I say open the mixer, you might have to stop and think, what's the mixer? If I ask you to open the inspector, smart controls, the editors, again, you might have to take a second to think about what are these things? 
Well, luckily, Apple has thought this through. In fact, the way that they associate key commands with different functions in Logic Pro is often by the first letter of that function, feature, or area. For example, by pressing A, you can show or hide automation across the application. So right now, I can write some automation. Once I'm done, I just press A again to hide automation. If I want to begin recording, all I have to do is press R, R for record. Or if you hold Command and B, in this case we're using a modifier, opens the bounce dialog if you want to bounce your project down to a single stereo file that you can share or upload. Or M for mute to mute a track. Now, of course, this can't be a perfect system, right? Because there's so many letters and numbers and keys on the keyboard. For example, because the mute function for a track takes up the letter M, to open the mixer, you have to press X. But at least X is in the word mixer. So right there is that classic Apple elegance when it comes to design, in this case, when it comes to the key commands and their associated functions in Logic Pro. In my opinion, this is significantly better than any other DAW I've experienced on the market. But to further help you along in your mastery of key commands, I wanna show you a couple other settings. By going to the top menu bar to Logic Pro and going down to Settings under View, in the middle of the View Settings is a section called Windows. Now, by default, Logic Pro should already have this enabled, but if you don't have it enabled on your system, you can enable the option to show help tags. And this is so helpful for learning key commands. For example, if you hover your mouse just about over anything in the application, you'll get this little pop-up help tag that will tell you what it is your mouse is hanging out on. And if I hover my mouse over, let's say the automation view, it will say show hide automation, but you can also see a key command is labeled in the help tag the letter A. If I hover my mouse over this plus symbol in the tracks area, you can see this is the add tracks button, or you can use key command, option, command, and N. There's duplicate tracks with command and D, playback by pressing spacebar, record for R, you get the picture. You can also get familiar with key commands by holding option and pressing K to open the key commands assignment menu. You could also, of course, go to Logic Pro, and go down to key commands and edit assignments. And this menu will list out all of the key commands you can use in Logic Pro. Now there's a search bar in the upper right corner of this window. So if you're curious how to solo a track or channel strip, you can just type in the word solo. And this will show you a list of all key commands or functions that could have a key command associated with it with the word solo in its title. Right, so to toggle solo for a channel strip, all you have to do is press S. But if you're curious of what a key command could be, but you don't know the word to associate with that key, well, there's a tab here labeled pressed. And now you just press the key or combination of keys that you wanna see the assignment for, if there is an assignment. For example, command in F reveals to me that I can show or hide flex pitch and time with this key command. Z is to toggle zoom to fit selection. And shift command in zero is to bypass all effect plugins on a channel strip. There's actually no assignment for this function. I assigned it myself so I could bypass all the plugins on a channel strip if I want to quickly A-B the results of my processing. And yes, if looking at little help tags and digging into the key assignment window every time you wonder about a key command or a function feels like the long way around to learning key commands in Logic Pro, yeah, I have a free PDF you can download with the 60 most essential key commands I think every Logic Pro user should use. But all this to say, when you see someone working in this fashion, working with key commands, you know they are serious about their creative work in Logic Pro because they can just fly. So I hope today's video was helpful for you and I'll check you for more later. Take care.